This morning, <coughs> I'm going to spend time talking about the Buddha. I'm sure everybody know, knows uh, who the Buddha is. But it is uh, still better for us to spend some time trying to learn more about him. There is a very beautiful uh, statement in uh, Anguttara Nikaya. It uh, says, Ekapukkalo bhikkave loke upajmano upajati bahujana hitai bahujana sukhai bahuno jana satta hitai sukhai deva manusana. Did you understand it? <laughs> <laughs> That means, this statement is very beautiful, very profound, and very meaningful. The statement means, Ekapugalo bhikkave loke upajmano upajati. In the world, there will arise an individual, unique individual, for the benefit of human beings, for the happiness of many beings, including uh, divine beings. In this statement, he said, Bahujana hitaya, Bahujana sukhaya. These are the, the two key words. He did not say the, he did not say, Sabba jana hitaya, sabba jana sukhaya. Sabba means, I write it on the board, in case you want to see these Pali words occasionally. Uh, <coughs> there is a difference between these two words. He said, uh, Bahu. Jana hitaya, not sabba jana hitaya. Bahu means many. Sabba means all. That means when Buddha arises, this unique being arises in the world, he arises for the benefit of many. Many human beings, many divine beings. That precludes certain other beings. Many human beings are precluded, many divine beings are precluded. That means he, that unique being, came to the world not for the benefit of everybody. Why? Because everybody is not ready. That unique being came to the world for the benefit of those who are ready. Those who, those who are prepared to receive the message. Others who are not prepared to receive the message may not be benefited. That's what it means. In his uh, teaching, which we will discuss this afternoon, he will never said anything untrue. This statement is very true. Not every human being is a Buddhist. Never. With, while he was alive, few people were Buddhist. Many people were not. So is even today. Some are real, some are not. And he knew this. And therefore, uh, this unique being arised, ar ar arises in the world for the benefit of those beings whose <coughs> merits are 
ready to receive his message. In fact, to be born as a human being in a time when a Buddha is alive is most fortunate occurrence, most fortunate event. And to be born as a human being with the necessary and sufficient faculties and in intelligence to understand his Dhamma is more fortunate. And everybody is not like that. Therefore, only for the benefit of those most fortunate beings, uh, this unique being came into existence. Now, this unique being <coughs> has various attributes, qualities. When we pay respect to the Buddha, we recite these qualities, attributes. There's a, there's a formula which uh, we just finished reciting. Some of you were not here in the morning, early morning. This morning we recited a formula which uh, uh, comprises of the attribute of this unique being. And these are the attributes that I'm going to explain in this talk. <coughs> we say in Pali, Itipi so bhagava araham samma sambuddho vijja charan sampanno sugato loka vidu anuttaro purusudhamma sarati sattha de manusanam buddho bhagava which means, Sat indeed is the exalted one, worthy, perfectly enlightened, endowed with knowledge and conduct, well gone, noble of the world, supreme trainer of persons to be tamed, teacher of gods and humans. These are the attributes. Now, I am going to explain these attributes one by one uh, in the form of introducing Buddha, the Buddha to you all. He, uh, the first attribute is called uh, Bhagava. Bhagava uh, has several meanings. One is uh, excellent, fortunate being. In fact, uh, one has to be extremely fortunate to be liberated from uh, all kind of psychic irritants, psychological problems, pains and sufferings. And one, for, one should be most fortunate to be honored and respected even uh, uh, 2000 500 years after his death, not only when he was alive, but up to this day, one should be most fortunate to be honored as a human being. Second, that second meaning of Bhagava is Bhagava, I write on the board in case you want to know the spelling. I'm sure when, uh, if you can get hold of this book, this formula is given in Pali as well as in English. However, 
translation also is given almost literal translation, word for word translation. But it is still better if we uh, learn the words separately, each word separately. So first word is Bhagava. Bhagava. One meaning of Bhagava is fortunate. Fortunate. The other meaning of Bhagava is Bhagava in fact is a noun. One who is fortunate is Bhagava. The other meaning is one who uh, analyzes things, divides things. Bhagar means breaking, dividing, analyzing, classifying things into various groups. Talking about classification, uh, one day I was giving a talk in the uh, Smithsonian Museum to uh, school um, teachers. And um, one teacher asked me, uh, Bhante, in Western uh, education system, we learn things uh, to classify, categorize. Number. Is there something like that in Buddhism? Then I gave him a list of numbers, uh, all in the teachings of the Buddha. I asked him to give me any number. I can find something to fit that number in the teachings of the Buddha. You give me 84,000. There are 84,000 aspects of the teachings of the Buddha. You gave me 5, 10, 20, 50. For any number, there is something, some category in the Buddha's teaching. That is how he divided things, categorized things, for people to make it very easy for people to understand. And therefore, he is called Bhagava, one who classifies things, divides things, breaks things in, into various categories. Uh, in the when I explain the Dhamma in the afternoon, I will give you some categories of uh, his teaching. Now I simply want to mention the meaning of the word Bhagavan. So the second meaning is uh, one who categorizes, divides, classifies, breaks things into various classes. Now. Uh, and the other meaning is uh, he separates bhava and vibhava. Bhava is uh, Bhava is becoming. It comes from the root bhu, to be. Uh, the other is vibhava. Vibhava. V plus bhava. V means the absence, negative, of becoming. Bhava uh, also means uh, samsara. Samsara means uh, uh, repeated birth and death. Vibhava means its opposite. That is Nibbana, not becoming. So Nibbana is um, the end of becoming. 
So he divided these two and classified the meaning of this, uh, I mean, uh, these two. Uh, and therefore he is, his, his uh, understanding of the difference between these two is very precise. And therefore he is called Bhagava. Then, uh, another meaning is, one who uh, brought the uh, continu continuation of birth and death to an end is called Bhagavan. So all this means that uh, he is a unique being. Now, Bhagiva Yutto, he is endowed with fortune. Uh, fortune in every respect. His uh, appearance, his uh, help, his wisdom, understanding. Uh, mindfulness, determination, and so forth and so on, all these are unique. And therefore he is called Bhagavad, a fortunate one. I don't want to, as I mentioned, I don't want to go into the details of uh, things he categorized because I want to mention them at the uh, in the evening, when I when I talk about the Dhamma, so although I have mentioned these categories in uh, uh, the Buddha's uh, under under this title, Bhagava, I rather suspend them since uh, we have very little time. Every uh, after every lecture, I want to spend some time answering questions. Therefore, if I spend all the time to talk. You may not have time to ask me ask me questions. Therefore, I restrain uh, explaining uh, from explaining all these things in one talk. Uh, the second meaning of Bhagava, I rather stand, although I try to talk sitting, since um, I cannot see everybody. When I cannot see everybody. Um, I don't feel comfortable to talk, so I stood up and start. I hope you may not mind that. Then you know. Second meaning uh, of the second attribute of the Buddha is uh, Arahang. The word Arahang. Araha and um, the, the noun is Araha uh, it's uh, 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 accusative singular is Arahang so we put Araha or M with dot on it Araha and uh, in Pali, romanized Pali text, you find uh, uh, this in in with this uh, curve at the bottom to indicate n sound. Arahang means uh, suitable. One meaning. <clears throat> Second meaning is uh, pure. Third meaning is uh, 
one who does not commit anything unwholesome in secret. So these are the three meanings of Arahan. One meaning is uh, pure, holy, noble. Third meaning is uh, uh, suitable, worthy, worthy of reverence, respect, and so forth. Third meaning is one <coughs> who does not commit anything unwholesome in secret, like uh, average ordinary people, they have uh, 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 dual personality, one in public, one in secret. In the dark, one uh, behavior, in the light, another behavior. In front of people, one behavior. Uh, when there is nobody around, another behavior. And in the Buddha's case, there was no such dual personality, only one, whether in public or in private, whether internal or external, in the dark or in the light. That means one is 100% honest, sincere, within oneself. As a human being it is not very easy to be 100% honest, sincere all the time and to have concordance with words, deeds and thought all the time. Not easy. Only one has to be a perfectly enlightened to have that kind of personality and that he had. The word Arahan is also used for his disciples, uh, enlightened disciples are called Arahan. One day uh, Mahaprajapati Gautami, uh, his uh, the foster mother, brought a piece of cloth and tried to offer it to the Buddha. And um, he said, uh, uh, Mother, please give it to the Sangha. Then she said, uh, My dear son, I made this cloth particularly for you. All the time from the beginning of making this cloth, I had in my mind to offer this to you. And therefore, please accept it. Then Buddha said again, Mother, please give it to the Sangha. And third time she repeated her request and the third time the Buddha repeated his response. Why? Buddha said, they also are Arahants, just like the Buddha. Pure one, holy ones. And therefore, the word Arahan has a common meaning for both the Buddha and his holy disciples. Uh, the word Arahan also is used for, uh, as I said, suitable. One day, uh, when he was after the attainment of enlightenment, he was walking towards Benares and he met a young man called Upaka. He asked him, uh, who are you? He said, uh, he, he asked, who are you? What is your teacher? Who is your teacher? What kind of uh, teaching uh, would you profess? Then uh, Buddha said, uh, Name Acharyavati, Sadhisome Namijati, Sadeva Kasmi, Lokasmi, Natine Patipugalu. 
He said, I don't have a teacher. Sadisome nevijjati, there is no equal to me. Sadeva kasmi, low kasmi, including divine being and human beings. Nathime patipuggaru, there is no a duplicate of me, similar person to me. And therefore I am called an arahant. That in that uh, explanation, he explained the meaning of uh, Arahan in in the sense that he is uh, 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 pure, suitable for being uh, uh, enlightened, exalted person. Then <coughs> he said. He is an Arahan because he, at one time he said, Abhinyayyan Abhinyatan Bhave Tabbanj Bhavitan Paha Tabban Pahinang Me Tasma Buddhosmi Brahmana. I have discarded what is to be discarded. I have realized what is to be realized. I have attained what is to be attained. I have practiced what is to be practiced, and therefore I am an Arahan. The third attribute of the Buddha is called Sammasam Buddha. I like to spend a little longer time on uh, this word. Uh, Samma Sambuddha Since it is a different word, I use different color. <laughs> Samma, all these are A's, eh? Samma Sambuddha Samma means well. As you know, in the Noble Eightfold Path, every word, every first word is Samma. Uh, samma Ditti, Samma Sankapa, Samma Vacha, and so forth. So Samma means very well, complete, perfect. Sang means oneself, alone. Buddha enlightened. That, that, therefore, the whole word means one who attained enlightenment fully well by himself, without a teacher. As I mentioned earlier, the word Arahang is used for both the Buddha and his disciples. When I explain this word, you probably might have uh, guessed the difference between Arahang and the Buddha. This is one difference. Now, an Arahan, his disciple, any disciple, cannot be called Samma Sambuddha. Why? Because an Arahan, a disciple, is a disciple, by definition. He has to have a teacher, he has to have a, things to study, and he has to follow somebody. Only when somebody knows, somebody teaches, uh, that individual can attain that state. But the one who uh, rediscovers the truth by himself without a teacher and discover, rediscovered it fully well, completely, 100%, without leaving an iota, unenlightened. 
and the thing is called Samma Sambuddha. Now there are differences. Besides this, there are other differences between Arahang and Buddha. This is one difference. Second, Buddha has a very special knowledge, ability, a skill, a power to uh, understand people. That is called uh, Asaya Nusaya Jnana. Asaya Anusaya. Asaya means gross defilements. Anusaya means subtle defilements. The word actually Asaya means it is very uh, actually people who uh, learn uh, uh, Buddhism if they learn this meaning of these words, they can understand the teaching much better. Especially these technical terms. You may come across these terms when, when you read Buddhist texts. Uh, very often you may come across these words. Uh, asaya Anusaya Asa means that which flows like water, oozes things out, oozes things out from the body, from the mind. Uh, flow like water. Certain gross defilements are flowing, oozing out. And therefore they are called asa. Asai also, its Sanskrit form is uh, Asrava. Asrava. Asrava, um, that is in Ayurvedic uh, medicine, uh, a certain concoction which is called Asrava which is uh, a, a composition of all kinds of roots, herbs and uh, leaves and flowers and roots, nuts and so forth and uh, put into a big uh, container and bury in the ground and let it brew for a long time. <laughs> when it is brewed, that is very strong, just like uh, alcohol. But it doesn't have alcoholic effect but it has a very powerful medicinal effect. And that which kept for a long time uh, to brew for a long time is called asrava or asaya. Our defilements are brewed <laughs> for a long, long time in samsara from time immemorial these defilements greed, hatred and delusion and so forth are brewed um, in us, in our mind and therefore they are called asaya very beautiful, very meaningful term anusaya is subtle defilements anu means uh, anu has two meaning. One is very small. For, inst for instance, uh, for atom, a Pali Sanskrit word is anu. Anu. Parama anu means the finest, last, divisible matter. Parama anu. Parama means greatest, the highest, the finest. The other meaning of Anu means uh, subtle, which, is, which may not necessarily uh, be something material, 
but uh, psychological, but very subtle. Saya means sleep. Anu saya means sleeping under. Dormant, inactive, very subtle. Sometimes you go to a um, cave and meditate. For 20 years, you think you are all attained enlightenment. Very pure, clean, neat. <laughs> no anger, no hatred, no greed, no lust. You come to the street, then somebody step on your toes, you punch him <laughs> on his nose. <laughs> eh? So all the time you were in the cave, meditating, you had this old dormant woman sitting, lying down. Until an opportune moment arises, it remains inactive. That is called anusaya. So, when Buddha saw somebody, the main purpose of explaining these two terms is, when Buddha saw somebody, he can immediately know how much asaya that person has, <laughs> how much anusaya that person has. People sometimes uh, uh, when we talk about the Dhamma and uh, so forth, we say Buddha gave a lecture. At the end of the lecture, 20,000 people attained enlightenment. Then people say, how come these days uh, we hear lectures, Dhamma talks and read and so forth. We never heard of anybody attaining enlightenment. How come? <coughs> because teachers are not enlightened. The students are not enlightened, <laughs> not ready to attain enlightenment, they are not <laughs> that. In his time, when he taught Dhamma, he knew every person's state of mind. How much this uh, asa the person has, how much anusa that person has. And according to that state of uh, spiritual development, Buddha taught the Dhamma. And that is a very special skill. You may have heard all kinds of stories about the uh, life of the Buddha. I mean, uh, stories of other monks and so forth who attain enlightenment very quickly. Buddha even sometimes would give a koan to somebody. Of course, not Japanese koan. <laughs> it's a sort of a Pali koan. <laughs> I give you one koan if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Just to uh, stimulate the person's intellect, he would give very short, very brief uh, statement. Like, uh, I think Mike know, Michael know the, knows that uh, in our Dhamma talk, Dhamma classes, uh, Bhavana, there was... Uh, Two brothers, uh, elder brother and younger brother. They were called Panthaga. Panthaga means uh, one who is born on the road, born on the on, on street. Not big street. When the mother was going to her parents' house, she was fully pregnant. The child was born on the road. And the name given to him was Panthaga, born on the road. Very simple, easy way of giving names. Mm -hmm. Second time she was going back home to give birth to another second child, also born on the road, because she had to walk very long distance and no you know, cars or automobiles and airplanes and so forth. She had to walk. And again she gave birth to another child. And he was called, first one called Mahapantaka, second was called, one was called Chula Pantaka. Maha means big, senior, Chula means junior, younger. So anyway, when Mahapantaka became a monk and uh, he brought his younger brother also and made him a monk, he tried to teach him Dhamma and tried to teach one stanza, four line, four simple line stanzas, stanza for four months. He could not learn. Then he said, you stupid! You cannot learn anything without memorizing Dhamma. How can you live a monk's life? Go home. Leave the road. 
But this young one was very devoted, very dedicated, very sincere. He wanted to remain in the robe. Crying, weeping, he slowly went to the Buddha. And complained, the Buddha asked, What is the matter, Chula Pantaja? My brother asked me to leave the robe and go home. Why? Then he told the story. Then he said, Well, come. This is not his dispensation. Anybody can stay in this robe, in the practice the Dhamma. Come. Take this piece of cloth. He gave him a very small, a pure, white piece of cloth and asked him to stand in the sun. Put in the piece of cloth in his uh, palm. Ask him to say a koan. What is the koan? Rajo Haranam, Rajo Haranam, Rajo Haranam. Very simple koan. But it has a meaning. It is not just a sound, a, you know, just a syllable, but it has a very deep, powerful meaning. What is the meaning? I am cleaning, I am cleaning, I am cleaning. That is the meaning. So he put his white piece of cloth on the left palm, and with the right palm, standing in the sun, he was repeating this koan, you may call it even mantra. Tajoharnam, cleaning, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning. After a while he saw this white, beautiful white piece of cloth, instead of cleaning, became dirty. Then he realized, after all, everything is impermanent. This body is not made of jewel, diamond, gold. It has impurities. And because of that, this became impure. Pure white piece of cloth became impure, dirty cloth. Because of my rubbing, sweat, standing in the sun, thinking of all these things, very quickly he attained enlightenment with certain supernatural powers. Of course, he was ready, but the saw his uh, state of mind. He, how much asa he had, how much anusaya he had, and according to that, he gave him the mantra. Koan. And this only Buddha can do. This is one difference. I mean the second difference. First is Buddha attained enlightenment by himself. Second difference is that uh, he is he was able to see people's defilements. How much they are, what degree of uh, defilements, uh, I mean to what degree they have defilements. Third difference is Indriya paro pariyati jnana. <coughs> Indriya means uh, faculties. We have all kind of faculties. <coughs> we have... Uh, Indriya means senses. We have six senses, including the mind. These are, are material senses. I, ear, no sense of all. And they are called Indriya because uh, what one sense does, the other sense cannot do. Therefore, in that particular area, that sense is the chief. Indra means chief. In uh, uh, Pali Sanskrit, uh, king of God is called Indra. Indra means chief of God. Indriya means that which is chief that which is chief in that area. So, in seeing, nothing else is chief as eyes. Therefore, it is called Chakku Indriya. In hearing, nose cannot do that. <laughs> Only ear can do it. In hearing, therefore, ear is the chief. Therefore, ear is called Sota Indriya. Like that, we have six Indriyas. Chakku, Sota, Gana, Jiva, Kaya, Mana. In addition, we have five other Indriyas, chiefs. They are called, I am not going to write all these Pali words because it a long time. It might even confuse and you may not even learn anything. 
So I like type only few uh, necessary uh, <coughs> keywords. Sadda. Chakus Ota, etc. you can um, find everywhere. But this was not uh, Sadda Indriya. Sadda means faith, confidence. The seed, the beginning of anything. Uh, sometimes people say Sadda is not something uh, Buddhist, it is alien to Buddhism. Buddhism does not have, does not talk about Sadda. That is wrong. Buddhism does talk about Sadda. That is another subject perhaps we can talk some other time. This is first Indriya. Second is Viriya. Indriya is the same. Sati is the third Indriya. Uh, samadhi. Then the fifth is Panya. Now, Viriya is energy, effort. Viriya is the basic of energy. Energy has two levels. Uh, one level is the basic necessary virya, basic energy. Uh, the second level is when the energy is active. There's another word for them, for that. When the energy is just dormant, it is energy but uh, not active. Just like any energy when it is in the wire, it is not called electric. What called? It is not called light. When energy is in the wire, it is not called, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, refrigerator or cooling power or heating power or anything. Likewise, when energy in Pali, spiritual faculties like virya, when it is dormant, it is called virya. When it is active, it is called vayama. Vayama. O Padhana. Padhana. These are spiritual faculties. <clears throat> the third spiritual faculty is called Sati, the most important spiritual faculty. The chief, head, the crown, the diamond of spiritual faculties. The fourth is called Samadhi, concentration. Fifth is called Panya, the crown. When Buddha saw somebody, he would know how much of these faculties are developed in that particular individual. How much Sadda, Sati, Samadhi, Panya and so forth in, improved developed. And uh, such a person will have uh, five other qualities such as that uh, that person has thick kindri. Thick kindri means his uh, understanding is very quick, sharp. That person is uh, uh, easily uh, easy to uh, uh, teach the person learns easily and that person's uh, behavior is refined not coarse and uh, uh, that person's uh, uh, general behavior towards words, deeds is more refined. And that person is also finally called, uh, has uh, 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 the understanding of uh, the 
the defilements. That person would uh, we would have fear of uh, doing anything wrong which brings him harmful effect. That's called Paraloka Vajja Bhayada Sadi. As soon as Buddha sees somebody, he sees in that person these five spiritual qualities as well as those five additional qualities in that person immediately. And according to that, he would preach Dhamma. This is the fourth difference between the Buddha and Arahant. Arahant doesn't have that. To recap, the first difference I must say is the Buddha in enlightenment by himself. Second difference that Buddha uh, knows people's defilements, degree of defilements. Third difference is that uh, Buddha would be able to know how much uh, spiritual faculties these people have developed. And the fourth difference is Buddha uh, has a very special ability to perform miracles that is called Yamaka Patihariya Jnana. Yamaka means Yamaka Patihariya. Uh, Yamaka means two, double. Patihariya means uh, uh, performance of uh, uh, supernormal uh, fears. That means being the skill of performing certain things that appear uh, to be uh, too different. Like uh, when he met his uh, relatives for the first time after attainment of enlightenment, when he came to uh, Kapilabhattu, to see his uh, father, his former wife and uh, children, child and so forth. Uh, these people being uh, royal uh, members, being very proud, did not want to pay any respect to him and did not ac want to acknowledge his attainment of enlightenment. In order to humble them, he performed this miracle in which uh, two things appeared almost simultaneously at the same time. Like water coming from one pore of his body while a gush of, uh, no, flame of fire coming from another pore of the same body at the same time. That was just uh, possible only for a person like Buddha. Nobody else can do that. No Arahants can do that. And that is the uh, fourth difference. Yamaka Pati Hari Jnana. Jnana means knowledge. Fifth difference is that uh, Buddha had uh, Sabbanyuta Jnana. Sabbanyuta jnana means, when we translate into it into English, it means uh, omniscient. Omniscient. All knowing. This is very tricky term, tricky knowledge. When we say someone knows everything, someone knows all. <coughs> 
one can assume that that being, that person or particular individual would be able to know, see things all the time, whether asleep or awake. Everything all the time, like a, you know, a mirror, maybe a mirror ball, uh, where everything around can reflect all the time. That kind of, uh, sometimes people can, people may think uh, someone may have that kind of uh, omniscient uh, knowledge. It is not that kind of omniscient, that kind of knowledge. Nobody can have, nobody can see uh, things all the time, even when one is asleep. Uh, it is just like uh, when we say we burn something, the fire has to burn from uh, one end to the other end of that particular object. And the object should be uh, burnt totally, completely, when it burns from one end to the other end very gradually and slowly. Similarly, in Buddha's uh, omniscient knowledge, he was able to see things only when he focuses, focused his mind on that particular thing. It never happens automatically, it never, nothing will reflect in his uh, mind automatically. Never. Only when he focused his mind on any one particular thing at any one given time, at that time, that particular thing will be uh, crystal clear in his mind. And that is called omniscient knowledge. Sabba Nithanyana. To support that, there's another one. And this knowledge only a Buddha can have. Sixth difference <coughs> is that Buddha, when he has this knowledge, uh, nothing else can intervene and that's called anavaranyana, anavarana. I pronounce sometimes V as V, sometimes W, so it doesn't matter how you pronounce it in Pali, there are no V and W. <laughs> 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 Bali and Sanskrit, there is only one. You may pronounce it as, either as V or O as W. And uh, many Asian languages are like that. Like that. So, uh, Avarana, Avarana means blocking, obstructing. Na Avarana means Anavarana. Anavarana means that cannot be blocked. Nothing can intervene, come in between what Buddha wants to see and him. Nothing can come. And that is called his sixth knowledge, a difference also between him and his disciples. Seven differences, only these six actually are listed in uh, Patisambhida Magga. But there are many other differences. For instance, uh, uh, Buddha uh, did not have uh, what you call Kilesa Vasana. Kilesa uh, also very good term. Kilesa Vasana. Uh, 
Kilesa means uh, defilements. Vasana means uh, uh, residues. An arahant can have Kilesa Vasana. For instance, uh, just like uh, you sit on a, on your cushions, when you get up, uh, there still may remain uh, some warmth on your cushion. Cushion can still remain warm even after you get up. Because uh, when you when the body and cushion uh, come in contact, uh, heat uh, you know, fra transfer to the cushion and so forth. Similarly, when an arahant attain, attains enlightenment, even after the attainment of enlightenment, he may still have some uh, samsaric habits, some residues of his previous defilements. I tell you a story <laughs> about uh, uh, an arahant who had uh, such a defilement. I mean, many arahants have that. Many, many arahants have, uh, uh, after attainment of enlightenment, continued to behave in somewhat very unusual way, sort of uh, unacceptable uh, for not even arahant, but even for an ordinary monk. 